we're in a, a moment, at least here in Chicago, where we have transformational levels of resources. We have transformational opportunity. And the question is, are we going to work in a transformational way? And that's exactly what we're trying to do here in Chicago. What we know um, historically is that when there's been a spike in violence, the almost the primary and only response is to been to throw more law enforcement resources at the problem. It may temporarily bring down the spike in crime, but it doesn't do anything for the long-term root causes of the violence. Now, look, in the, in the short term, we have to make sure that our police department is holding violent, dangerous people accountable and that we're working with our county prosecutors and the court system to make sure that when we make arrests, and we put together good cases, those individuals feel the weight of responsibility and accountability. But in the long term, we know that we can't just arrest our way out of this problem. We have to invest our way out of this problem. When we see statistics like in my city, where the vast majority of victims and perpetrators of violent crime are 18 years or older, that then causes us to do a mind shift about where we're investing resources. We've got to continue to support our youth, but we also know that these adults, these unemployed, um, under-resourced adults are the ones that are driving the violence. So we've put together something called the Community Safety Coordination Center, which is our whole of government approach, meaning we're bringing every aspect of city government that has any role, any impact on community violence together literally in the same physical space so that we know across these various um, work streams, what's happening in particular areas. We're using data-driven strategies, and we're doing that in coordination with our community partners. And we're already seeing meaningful progress in the way in which we respond to crime, the way in which we're resourcing communities. This is the approach that's going to invest so, us out mm -hmm. of this long-term problem, not just here in Chicago, but I believe across the country. So, Madam Mayor, yesterday a 16-year-old was arrested and charged with murder uh, in your city for purported gang shooting that killed an 8-year-old girl uh, crossing a street. How should your whole-of-government approach um, with Chicago's Community Safety Coordination Center prevent tragedies like, like this from happening? Well, when you think about that one and many others, particularly when you see young people, there's got to be a number of things that are done. We have way too many illegal guns on our streets in Chicago. The fact that a, an adult was able to hand a firearm to this 16-year-old that then he used to shoot at what he believed gang members and then ended up killing eight-year-old Melissa Ortega, that gun should never have been in that young person's hand in the first place. So we've got to uh, continue to be extremely aggressive about disrupting the gun trafficking that is bringing guns in the city of Chicago. So, I, I support and applaud the work that the Biden administration has done, mm. but we've got to continue to make sure that we're looking at ways to disrupt that. But we also know that our young men are being lured to the streets in gangs, and we've got to hit hard against these gang members. We've got to make sure that we're uh, taking away the profit motive for them, and we've got to make sure that we identify them and eliminate the opportunities for them to lure our young men and women to the streets. And then we've so got to infuse. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I, I want to have you go back to um, the, the Biden administration. I want to pick up on something uh, on that. Um, Chicago is one of five major cities that the attorney general announced last summer are currently being targeted by a federal firearms trafficking strike force focusing on the sources uh, and channels criminals use to get guns into cities like Chicago. What specific progress or action has that strike force made um, in your city since last July? Well, well I think it's made us um, uh, focus on uh, uh, interagency cooperation. So we're working um, with great success with the ATF, uh, with the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, with the FBI, um, to look at gun trafficking and where the sources of these illegal guns are coming. Last year, we took um, 12,000 illegal firearms off our streets, many of which are as a result of the work that was being done with these strike forces and task forces. More to be done, though. We need to see more prosecutions of interstate gun trafficking. We've had very productive conversations uh, with the Biden administration. I recently um, sat down with the uh, Deputy Attorney General, Lisa Monaco. So I'm confident that those supports will continue um, with the Biden administration and our, all of our federal law enforcement partners. 
Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago, thank you very, very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Turning our attention now to New York City, I'm joined by Carol Mason, president of the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Uh, Carol, uh, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Thank you very much for being here. Good morning, Jonathan, and thank you for allowing me to be with you. So Mayor Adams has released his blueprint to end gun violence, but it's been met with criticism, criticism, especially his plan to reinstate a controversial plainclothes unit responsible um, for the murder of Amadou Diallo, a plainclothes uh, anti-gun uh, task force. And I'll ask you the same question I asked Mayor, Mayor Lightfoot. How do we address today's crime without resorting to the failed policies of the past? Well, thank you for um, having Mayor Light put on. I agree with everything that she said this morning. Um, it is it is a complicated problem, complicated situation that, that takes a, a whole of government approach. And there is no one solution to this. We've got to attack it at all at all points. And I love the, the fact that they are engaging the community and how to solve this. And it is something that needs to have community members in partnership. We need to be talking and using the data uh, to help us identify where it's happening, what the root cause is, and tackling things at the root cause. At the same time, we're trying to get the guns off the streets and out of young, out of people's hands. So, you know, the the other question I have when I and I asked um, then Mayor Adams this question about the plainclothes unit and how does he walk that fine line? Because as much as people want guns off the street. There, there are people who don't want to be um, shaken, not shaken down, but, you know, patted down and, and roughed up by police who view them automatically with suspicion. How does the city, how does the mayor walk this fine line? Can he? Is it possible? Well, my understanding from having conversations with people in, in, in the city and in NYPD is that the officers will be identifiable. They will have um, be able to be recognized as police officers. And it's my understanding that the goal is to make sure that they are part of the community. Um, it is a tough line to walk. It's a hard line. I do think that 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 this NYPD is committed to trying to figure out how to partner with the community and how to do this in a way that's constitutional. Don't know the answer to the how because it's complicated and it's difficult. But I understand they're committed to doing it in a way that's constitutional. Mm -hmm. You know, we showed at the top the part of the speech. Um, from the widow of um, of one of the slain police officers. Her name is Dominique Luzuriaga, um, of Officer Rivera. Um, and she took aim at New York City's new, the Manhattan, new ben Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg. I'm going to show you that part of her remarks, and we'll talk about it on the other side. The system continues to fail us. We are not safe anymore not even the members of the service. I know you were tired of these laws, especially the ones from the new DA. I hope he's watching you speak through me right now. And the new DA, Alvin Bragg, was there at the funeral service. Um, how much of an issue is not so much the new DA, but the, the, the policies that he's putting in, in place. So I want to say first that Officer Mora, the second officer who was killed, is a John Jay graduate. And it is um, something that is impacting our community deeply at John Jay as well. It is it, this is hard. Um, I do um, know that com that that our new DA um, is committed to working with law enforcement to get the guns off the street and to hold people accountable. Who are, who are using these guns. We have models of success. Um, what the Brooklyn DA, Eric Gonzalez, has done in order to um, look at the source of the guns and where it's happening and look at the source of the violence and preventing it and putting resources around those who we know are, as Mayor Lightfoot talked about, looking at those who are at risk of, of being lured into these gangs. The violence interruption work does work. That's why President Biden has committed federal funding to work with the community-based violence interrupters. This does work. And what we've got to remember is that it takes the partnership of everyone. It takes the partnership of law enforcement. It takes the partnership of prosecutors. It takes the partnership with communities in order to tackle this long term, because we don't want to just put a Band-Aid on and figure out how to deal with the emergency today. 
we've got to deal with the emergency, but we've also got to deal with the root cause mm-hmm. analysis of why this is happening.